podcast. Please hold. Your ears are very important to us. Please hold on and our program will begin shortly. The Soundcheck Podcast is coming up. Please continue to hold. with the Soundcheck podcast and everything that's happening in the New Sounds empire, just go to newsounds.org and follow us on social media. All of the icons are in the top right corner of the page. All of our other musicians are currently playing for other customers. Please stay with us, and someone will play for you in just a moment. From NewSounds.org and the studios of WNYC, it's time for another live performance in our Soundcheck podcast series, streaming live on Facebook and YouTube. I'm John Schaefer. The drummer and composer Marcus Gilmore has been gigging professionally since he was a teenager. Over the years, we've heard him play with VJ Iyer, with Chick Corea, and just a moment ago with sax player Chris Potter as well. It didn't take long for Marcus to make a name for himself on the music scene, which is no mean feat when your grandfather has already made a name for himself as one of the legends of jazz drumming. That would be the great Roy Haynes. But Marcus, as you will hear in a moment, is more than a jazz drummer. He's got a pretty interesting rig set up here in our studio, and he's got the rapper Mike Larry Draw in tow as well, and the two of them are going to start us off with a piece called Silhouette. Place it with better game, Your Honor. I play you to point me the gunner, cause I'm taking it back to my hip hop roots. My Afro brother will be proud of what my hip hop do. Very low is what I'm on the most hip hop stupid red. I in this game. Some say they put it bullet at me if I close the door and get it like I never stop. I never rock someone else's style. No, that's one of those things I can't be proud of. I live in the streets, I die in the streets. They told me the heat would make me complete, but I'm so into it. I'm so into it when I took that and the whole life into it. Life is a journey when it comes to it. I'm yearning, burning. We case it anytime I case it, anytime I okay it. It's nothing been a lady. I is spitting, I am be smitten. Anytime you see me getting life as it goes, I suppose I can get the foes. Anytime I get my woes, and then out of that worthy, I used to wear that jersey from New York City to the unknown city of anything burning. So here I go with it. Here I go with it. Here I go with it. Thank you. 
unapproved Music something I use, my unintentional groove Others try to abuse, I tell them to us some screws Loose in their cranium, not much to say to them I ask to chuck up the deuce, round about a goose Great in every shade, gang pull out the bang Chickens flock in the range, rains as they duck Yelling for a truce, sweet in a pineapple League is middle juice Anytime you see me, out it Anytime you see me, I'm out it Out my spine, any of mine Choking shots, rounded Four pounding been grounded I show them how I do it, so I spit so loud, kid. Blow the whistle, so fast. 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 That is called Silowave, a live performance here in the studio uh, from Marcus Gilmore and Mike Larry Draw. You heard Mike rapping, and everything else was coming off of essentially our drum kit, Marcus, but I've never heard it make those noises before. I want you to swing a mic over and. Uh... <laughs> That'll help. <laughs> That'll help. Uh, because I, I just, my, I hardly know where to begin, so I'll just begin by asking, what the hell are you doing over there? You know, that's a really good question. <laughs> I wish I had an answer for you. <laughs> no, uh, so you know. you've got, it, <laughs> most of this is our kit, which we hear day after day being used, but you've got something laid on top of some of the drum heads, and yes. it, it sounds like yeah. when you hit it here in the room, it's not mm-hmm. making a noise, but right. it is triggering a sound. What is that? Yeah, um... So that's basically, uh, they're basically called, they're sensors. Sensory Percussion is the name of the company made by Sunhouse. And um, they're sensors, so they're basically reading the, reading the vibration that I'm putting into the drum. Mm-hmm. Uh, it Basically, you have to train it, and it basically, once you train it, it knows when you're playing at a certain velocity or which part of the drum you're playing, and you can assign specific sounds for specific regions of the instrument. And so, um, and and they also have like a, you know, they're all, right now I have four triggers on, um, and they're all working with each other to kind of bring the sounds that I need, (laughs) that I need, basically. So it's not like they're just, they're not completely independent, they're independent, but they're also working with each other too, so. Which kind of like the four limbs of the drummer himself, right? Yeah, exactly. exactly, exactly, I want to come back to that in in a bit, but uh, so the idea that it's, um, it's kind of touch sensitive, right? It's very sensitive, yeah. So when when digital keyboards first came out, you know, this was the thing. You just mm-hmm. you hit a you hit a key and it just played the note and right. it just kind of sat there. And right, it wasn't until right, right. they became touch sensitive that you could play loud and soft. Right. And so you can th- you'll get a different sound hitting the thing softly than you would hitting it loud. And yeah. w- like if you're closer to the rim or more in the center, will that right. change the sound as Ab- well? Ab- absolutely. If you wanted to, you know, you can you can. Um, you can program it like that, but you don't, you don't have to, but you definitely can, and, yeah. and you can go further. So. All right, so yeah. uh, so that's obviously in addition to all the, the usual gear that, that you've accompanied, that accompanies the, the drummer these days. Yeah, you know, so cymbals, and you know, some of these cymbals are kind of funky, but they're yes, basically they just are. cymbals. <laughs> <laughs> they're all just cymbals. So uh, now the idea of these things all working independently but working together, I mean... Mm-hmm. You know, in addition to these soundcheck podcasts, one of the things that we've done here at New Sounds over the years is live concerts. And one of the most memorable concerts that I produced at Merkin Hall uptown some years ago was the late Max Roach. Oh, nice. Doing his four-part inventions. Did you ever hear those? You know what? I actually only heard part of it. I actually don't have... I'm not sure he ever... Oh, because I... I'm not sure he recorded them commercially. Right. But it was... they They were basically exercises in each limb acting independently so yeah that's the about title right. that i i, I feel like i might have heard like a bootleg or something but i definitely don't i don't recall an album so i was trying to figure that out i was like i don't yeah, know yeah. what album. <laughs> so there is no album official album but it sounds like you're very much interested in that as well that that each each limb oh, yeah. is independent but part of a whole Absolutely, yeah, so, absolutely. So how, I mean, that's a great idea. How do you actually do that in practice? Um, well, you just got to take it step by step, you know, start 
uh, you have to start with you have to start in singular sense. You know, you can't. Well, maybe you could, but I don't see it to be advantageous to to try to do everything all at once from the beginning. You mm-hmm. know, um, so, so it's you, you, it's an additive. You kind of build. Yeah, you start you start with one and you and you build from there. Yeah. And and how how crazy do you get? Do you have like s- s- sevens against fives against fours against threes, or is it not that kind of thing? Well, yeah, I've gotten into stuff like that, but to be honest, I mean, when I'm dealing with that concept of you know dealing with each limb in a very specific way, I I uh, I tend to not really. Just think about it like that, mm. you know. Although I've gone through periods where I was studying, it's like, oh, what would happen if I played this rhythm in seven over here? Like I, I, I've enjoyed doing that a lot in the past. Yeah, yeah. But in reality, when it comes to performing, I don't really do that kind of stuff so much. Although sometimes it, you know, there might be some times when people say I might get off and they be like, Marcus, what were you playing? I'd be like, well, I don't know. I have to hear it again because because at the in the moment I was just hearing the melodies, right, right. Or the harmony. You know, I see it as a harmonic instrument. So well, now that's you know that's one of the interesting things about this this rig that you've set up is there have been lots of drummers over the years who desperately maintain that their instrument is a melodic instrument. Right. You've made it explicitly melodic because you know that you're triggering sounds that that will produce melodic and harmonic content right yeah yeah yeah. no it's true i mean it definitely um it's kind of like getting an extra boost when you when you add these sensors yeah, yeah, to yeah. the instrument i mean i i think of it the same way without the sensors but with the sensors it's like your imagination can really 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 run wild so so uh as long as we're talking about you know independence of limbs and stuff um drummers i i don't know if you guys talk about this or not uh but most other instrumentalists talk about handedness, whether you're right-handed, oh, left-handed. Okay. Right, right. Is that a thing that you have to deal with? Um, I suppose I have to deal with it to some degree. You know, I don't, I mean, it's interesting because like, if you want to get like real drum drum geeky, some people oh, say- Oh, I don't. <laughs> you don't think, <laughs> Dude, I definitely you get kind of deep. I mean, I don't know how, how deep you want to go, but- I I um I guess most people would say that I'm right-handed. You know, okay. I I usually I usually if I'm going to play a right symbol, I usually play it with my right hand. Okay. But then a lot of times when I start phrases, a lot of time I start with my left hand. And sometimes I play the right symbol with my left hand sometimes. And then there've been times where I I've set up left-footed, so I was playing the kick drum with my left foot and and the hi-hat with my right foot. In fact, that's um, why I asked because oh, that's why yeah <laughs> because okay. yesterday's drummer here in our studio, J- Jason Berger, was talking uh-huh. about watching you set up something and it was on the wrong side and it was just like yeah he was playing like lefty and I, it yeah. never occurred to me that that was a thing it could be a drummer it could be lefty or righty yes that's definitely a thing because um, there are some left handed I actually know some drummers that are exclusively left handed like they always have their right symbol on this side or if it's on this side they play with they play it with their left hand yeah, yeah, yeah. and then usually the bass drum is on the left side and the height is on the right side it's, it's a pretty big difference from playing it the other way around it's pretty significant but you know I, I i do it every now and then it's kind of rare but i do it in situations where i feel like i just really want to hear what would happen if i just did it that's why i did it sometimes in, in conscious because i felt like i was getting into like a creative rut and i felt like it was Things were just starting to sound the same, and I just needed to freshen it up. So I figured it's kind of like a radical thing, to radical way, and, and also kind of vulnerable because like I'm not a I'm not a left-handed player. Yeah, yeah. But my my concept was if I know the music, then I'm going to play the music regardless of whether I'm right-handed or left-handed. I, I'm just going to be more limited in some ways, but then I'll find more paths to play something that I normally wouldn't think of, which is what happened. So once I found that. Then I switched back to right, and then I, I was able to bring that information back to the <laughs> right, right-handed. Right, right. So. Well, you know, guitarists will often talk about alternate tunings right, right, for right. the same reason. You right, know, you, right, right. you get you get into habits right. uh, in standard tuning, mm-hmm, and mm-hmm. when suddenly the strings are not playing the notes you expect, you it kind of shocks you into something different. Right, right. You don't have a yeah, choice because yeah, yeah. you can't you can't play the same stuff you always play. I yeah, can't. Yeah. I can play some of it, but not not most of it. So. And I, I assume you've been playing drums for a very long time. When uh, Growing up with Roy Haynes as your grandfather, I mean, was that kind of music just in the house constantly? Music was definitely in the house constantly. Um, yeah, you know, he's the, he's the patriarch of the family and, and obviously one of the greatest musicians um, 
ever. So, and, <laughs> so yeah. And certainly it's, one of the most recorded musicians in jazz history. Yeah, yeah. No, he's, I mean, he's one Every, of the architects of this instrument, you know. Yeah. But, and, and the thing is, you know, he wasn't, he wasn't the only musician in my family. So I, he's on my mother's side. My mother, my mother's two brothers are both musicians as well. Well, but, your uncle Graham Haynes right. has been here on a number of occasions. I'm sure, Graham. Yeah. And, and Craig, too, plays drums. And, and then my father is also a musician, too. My father, Randy, Randy Gilmore, plays saxophone. And my mom was singing in church, so really, like, it was music all over. Yeah. The, it was really everywhere. So if you're into music, you could just start talking to anybody in my family <laughs> about it, and you can get some information, you know, if you're lucky. And, <laughs> if and you're lucky. you know, I'm sure you've had the opportunity to talk music with a wide variety of people. I mean, you've played with, as I mentioned before, Chick Corea, Vijay Iyer, uh, David, or more properly, David Varelis. Oh, yeah, yeah. With whom you kind of worked on this next piece, right? Yes, yes, yes. Um, yeah, David is a, is a really great friend of mine and um, one of my favorite musicians. So Terrific Cuban pianist based here in, in New York. Yep, yep, yep. And um, yeah, he, uh, you know, we're always just, sometimes we make things and I don't know, I'm not sure what to do with it. I'll just give him some drums. We're like, hey man, you want to <laughs> mm-hmm. do something with this? And he, he basically, oh, he basically, uh, <laughs> hold on, <laughs> sorry. <laughs> Well, this is moving this, around too much. Man. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> sensors, I told you they're sensitive. So. <laughs> um, uh, yeah, so basically, he, he gave me some stuff that he just had, and he was like, I don't really know what to do with it. It just kind of sitting in my computer. So I said, Oh, yeah, I'll do something with it. Yeah. <laughs> let, me, let me just chop it up real quick and put it in these sensors and, and see what happens. So All right. that's what I did. So this, is, this piece is called Excerpts of New Bay, and uh, this is just you. Mike Larry's going to sit this one out. Uh, or stand this one out, as the case may be. Oh, yeah. <laughs> um, Marcus Gilmore is here with us in the studio. Uh, you'll next be able to see and hear him live in New York performing with Pat Metheny at Sony Hall, September 11th, 12th, and 13th. Today he's here with us. You want to play it? Sure. All sure. right. Excerpts of New Bay is the name of this live performance by Marcus Gilmore.
<laughs> that is Marcus Gilmore, solo, live, here in our studio on this edition of uh, the Soundcheck podcast from newsounds.org. Uh, sitting behind our regular kit, but with his sensory percussion adding all kinds of... It sounded like a submarine at the very end of that song there. Um, so, Marcus, what, what's the question that people ask you when you get off? They say, what were you playing out there? Because that's what I feel like asking you. <laughs> well, I mean, sometimes people do that. Or some, no, sometimes people ask me, that's more of a musician thing. They ask me, like, specifics, like uh, what technical was, questions. Yeah, like, what, what were you, what rhythm were you playing? Or what were you thinking when you did this? Or, and I usually can't because remember. Because my producer, Karen, in the control room says she she heard, she swears she heard a Bo Diddley beat in there somewhere. Oh, yeah? <laughs> and, and I know I heard a triple meter uh, at one point in there. So there was just all kinds of stuff flying around. Yeah. How much of that is fixed and, and how much of that is in the moment? For this, for that piece of most of it is actually um, in the moment. There's a very little that's fixed. Okay. So every time I play, it could it could be different, really. And with um, these sensory instruments, how reliable is the the sound coming back to you? Do you know in advance all the time what you're going to get when you hit the drum head at a certain velocity in a certain spot? Uh, yeah, for the most part, it's um. Oh, you are not convincing me at all. Well, well the thing <laughs> is, it, it depends on how you program it, and you really have to make sure that you just, tr you know, that you train everything. Because, like I said, they're so sensitive. Yeah. So, like, for instance, if you're playing, if I play this exact, if I play a kit tomorrow that's the same exact sizes, mm -hmm. um, and I have the same settings on there, and I want to play the same pieces, you can't just go on and play and expect it to be the same, even mm -hmm. if it's the same size because the tuning might be different, so the vibration is different. So you really have to make sure you check you have to make a list and check yeah. it twice because it's very, you know, it, that's why it's so amazing because it's so sensitive, but also you have to be careful because it's so sensitive. Right, right. <laughs> so, right. so any kind of motion, I mean, you were you were almost triggering it while we were talking before yeah, you played Yeah, I, I piece. did. You know, I, cause I, I sometimes I forget and I put my foot on the bass drum and I forget there's actually a sensor right here, so it just kind of kind of went off. But Yeah. Now, Marcus, um, y you are part of, uh, Rolex has this annual mentor-protege mm -hmm. thing, Yep. and you are uh, working with the great Indian uh, classical drummer, the tabla player, Zakir Hussain, as the, his the protege. Name, Zakir Hussain, yep. <laughs> so how is it, I mean, first of all, in that tradition, mentor and protege is how that music gets passed down traditionally mm -hmm. so for zakir it makes perfect sense and you know in in that tradition you don't need to necessarily play the same instrument as your master or student right, 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 right. but but for you how is it i mean what are you what are you learning from someone whose approach to rhythm is a, a, a kind of a different tradition i mean it's all music you know it's yeah. all music so um you know, I have a, uh, you know, I have the tradition that I came up with. You know, in African American culture, and and um, you know, I've I've had mentors within my family and, and extended family, but I've also always been pretty open. You know, so w when this opportunity came around, you know, it's obviously um, a great honor. So, and you know, I, I'd had a little bit of experience studying uh, music in the Indian classical tradition. Really. Well, just through, you know, not like I never got super, like I was never, <laughs> I never learned like all the syllables. And I, I never went that, that kind of deep. But, um, but you know, I, I had the sound in my ear, you know, yeah. by hanging out with people like Steve Coleman and, and Vijay. And my Uncle Graham was the first one to expose me to the tabla, really. I mean, I'd seen like Zakir's face and every, and, and uh, Chula Gertu. I'd seen like their faces being a young drummer, young kid reading mm -hmm. these magazines and stuff. But the first time I actually heard that instrument was through my uncle because he he was doing a lot of electronic music and a lot of those some of those guys were experimenting with that so it was more in an electronic context. Right, there was that Asia Massive movement in the '90s where right, you right, had right. people mostly like like Calvin Singh. Right, exactly, Calvin Singh. Yeah, yeah, yeah. All those guys. Yep. So and yeah, him and my uncle are pretty good friends. So, uh -huh. um, but and then a little bit later, shortly after that, actually, I, I met Steve and um, Steve Coleman. Yeah. And he and he actually showed me, you know, some some stuff that was northern classical with the tabla. But then he also showed me a lot of the um, Carnatic stuff with uh, huh. this this other maestro from the south, whose name is Shivaraman Omayal Piram Shivaraman. 
Okay. He's a master. And it's a whole different system down there. But, right, right. Um, so, you know, I was checking out checking out stuff from the south and the stuff from the north. And then uh, fast forward, you know, I met, met Vijay and he was showing me some things, also Carnatic and, and North Indian stuff. And then uh, I finally got to meet the the great Zakir Hussain, you know. Yeah. So it's pretty great. But the thing about him is, I, I love is that, um, uh, you know, he's teaching me. I'm, I've learned and I've got a chance to see really closely how he how he puts together these compositions, and not just uh, through composed compositions, but also like you know, improvisation, spontaneous mm-hmm. compositions. And to see the way he thinks about it, and um, it's pretty fascinating, I must say. Yeah, I mean, most Western rhythms, we take a rhythm and and you you divide it. That's how you get right. That's how you get syncopation. Mm-hmm. But in Indian music, it's additive. You're you're adding, you know. So, the the most basic rhythm, teen tal, is sixteen beats. It's four plus four plus four plus four. Mm. And so it's, you know, you may end up in in a similar place, but you've come to it from a completely different point of view. You know, right. division as opposed to addition. Right, 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 right. Which is really kind of interesting. And and if you can find, it's really interesting. Yeah. Um, so. How is this affecting? You're in the middle of writing now, right? I am. You, I always am, but I'm really trying to remember really writing a lot. But, but you're writing a piece for the American Composers Orchestra. Yes. And is that is this kind of work with Zakir? Is that kind of informing the way you're approaching composition? Uh, yes. Um, I've never written for a large ensemble before, and. Um, and he surely has. <laughs> yeah, he has. Yeah. So, um, yeah. So I've actually been spending some time with him, um, just getting that together, and he's been coaching me. Um, I actually have to meet up with one of the guys from the ACO tomorrow. <laughs> oh, okay. It's actually one of the next things on on my list. But uh, Zakir has definitely been playing a, a very informative role yeah. in regards to that. So. So uh, a piece for orchestra. Will you be in this piece? At first, at first, I just wanted to write something and sit down and listen to it, like sit back and be like, okay, I want to hear it. You want to be a composer with a capital C. I mean, right? well, I just want to hear. I just want to hear. You know, yeah. I just want to hear. Yeah. I don't want to have to think about playing. But uh, he convinced me. He was like, no, you, you have to, <laughs> you have to play. So I was like, all right, so all right. I'll play. <laughs> I'll now, be on stage. <laughs> and when when will we hear this? When do you think it'll happen? I don't know when y'all will hear this because it's, uh, the plan right now is to um, is to uh, perform it first, actually in, in Cape Town, South Africa, with a different set of musicians. Wow! So the thing is, it's kind of tricky. So we're gonna um, write, well, finish the piece, and then have it played by the ACO in rehearsal, right? Sometime in the late fall, and then. I guess it will, ha- it will help to have a reference to play it in South Africa. So we'll use that recording as a reference, play it down there, and then sometime, hopefully next year, we'll play it in the in, States. In New, New York. York. Yeah, which but, is um, where I the don't ACO know. is based. Right. I don't know when yet. Okay. Um, so if you're not in South Africa, I don't know when you're there. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> um, but uh, so obviously you have a very wide, uh, you've cast a wide net in terms of music and collaborators. You've got Mike Larry Draw here with you. Why yes. don't we bring the two of you guys back together for this next piece, yes. which is called Flash Forward. Now, are these kind of standalone pieces, or are they parts of other projects? They're all standalone, actually. Okay. Yeah, they're all... I mean, right now I don't have any plans to... Uh, I never recorded Silhouette or anything. You know, I've played it with different, on- with different um, personnels, but... Uh, Okay. <laughs> and flash forward? Yeah, no, no, no. That's actually a fresh, fresh. <laughs> Super fresh. fresh. Super fresh. Just for, the, just for this. Just uh, for y'all. Just for y'all. Yeah, right. special. Marcus Gilmore is here with us, and uh, the piece is called Flash Forward. Once again, uh, Mike Larry Draw will be uh, rapping while Marcus does everything else. Um, Marcus looking very relaxed. He's got his feet up, which is a position I'm not used to seeing drummers in. But <laughs> all right let's uh let's hear the piece uh it's called flash forward
differently, differently, differently. I came my soul, I came my soul, I came my soul. Yeah. Ain't no need for the bullshit you seen to perpetrate. Every day, every night, I've been in fights. I seen flash floods. I'm seeing all types of things. I see what it was. The world is burning, you ain't doing nothing. The world is burning, you ain't doing nothing. It's money, everything you dream of, you see of. People dying. Cats, blood, kids, crips. Everything is in whipped. Everything is in shambles. Everything too legit. I don't know what to do. You do know what to do. We don't know what to do. Instead of being true to ourselves, being true to the way we supposed to. Mother Earth is calling and crying. I've been the most to. Do as I can as a hip hop artist to go through. All of the things are struggling life as I go. Cool. Charging up, I'm charging up, I'm charging what? I'm charging you for my reparations. The kids in the dedication. The kids never dedicated to nothing but they bones. They family crying, never leaving us alone. I tell them I got something to pick, it's a bone. Bury it into the ground, find out whoever Lee actually is in Daryl in town. I tell them right now, if I can't throw a pitch to this mound, I'm gonna knock it off the park. Every day, it's a shark rolling into this water. Tell them right now, it's Noah all trying to go to border. Which one is right? Is it the Muslim or Christians is out of sight? I don't know, it's paradise that I'm looking to the sky. Trying to figure out if outer space is with this you and I. I tell myself that I am a star, came from the planet Earth, but I'm going out to the Mars. Any question you know it's out of sight of quasars It's just me and a drummer trying to find out how far we can go <laughs> I've been a couple places in the world I've been, a, I've been, I've been a couple places in the world But I can't find the truth no, I can't find the truth I can't find the truth is it me? Is it you? 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 Is it This one for my melanated, tell them right now You my favorite, all I wanna do is be Jesse Davis in the top of the line of my spine I can find in the time that I've been here That this world's a little different who been here Yeah, tryna blast the dust, tryna take my Africa Motherland is backing up, but I gotta move forward Here's the south part of it, this is the heart of it This is the one that made me feel so cartilage In my thought, my process, I've been here, I've been so uh, with these life bears I've been in the room with the moon Where the elephant roam Trying to stand be home Trying to stand be home again Home again Home again Yeah, 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 yeah. Everything I blast, everything Proton, Cannon bring Colton, Banners bring Moton, Anton, Hammonds bring Atoms to the new Motron Tell them this is Motrin Trying to get it prolonged This is my headache I tell them this is the bad Written bad, hidden, hidden it in the bad Giving me more than everything It's consistency If I can't move, you can't move neither You can't move neither Head, arm, leg, leg, arm, head if I get head in the bed, that's right, head in the bed Meaning I get hit in the head in my bed, that means I'm dead <laughs> The FBI is coming, SCI is running, CSI is gunning for me Me, 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 you and me, <laughs> privacy uh, uh, Never been an X-rated person, but the X-band coming I'm a mutant in this possibility Cause my words bring more than just absurd More than horrific man that'll bring me Sam I am uh, uh, What the green forget the egg in the ham. Uh, uh, as long as this green can make me a man that can take all out my hands and give it straight to the kids. That's right, where I'm living is not in the prison, but it feels like one because I heal like one inside my own thoughts and process that made me low God, low God, oh, oh, just me and my Lord. 
Bringing it out with a sword. Anything I can do hard. Anything I get it soft. Wait a minute, it's the man. Wait a minute, it's the plan. Bringing it all like gam. Gamma rays, gamma rays, gamma rays, gamma rays, gamma rays. How I do it. How I do it. How I do it. Yeah, 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 yeah. How I do it. Give it away. Anything grooving, just be proton, neutrons, and organisms grooving. I tell them right now I'm losing my head. If I can't do what I need to do, it's my kids that I believe in. I live that I believe in. I live what I heat in. I tell them these heathens, I be even on me. Then I tell them this is easy. I odds are the odds of my odds in my eyes. I rewind it back and realize what everything I said. It didn't mean nothing, but it all means something. The kid is mean fronting. Uh. Marcus Gilmore, ladies and gentlemen. Give your friends up and make them all dead. You get five years, they get about ten plus a uh, hundred, maybe even a death chair. Uh, uh, maybe even a death chair. That's crazy. You gotta die, never live, never survive. It's like lynching a brother. I don't wanna be commissioned a brother, but I can tell you I can listen, my brother. You should listen, my brother. This one of those things that make you feel like you should give your wife a diamond ring, even though. All of that stuff don't mean a thing. It's just a materialistic situation you enter. That's right, I've been through so much. Uh, uh, my mama had cancer twice. Damn, she's living her life. Damn, she's doing what she could. I'm living it right. I'm just trying to be a good father. <laughs> I'm just trying to be. Uh, yeah, yeah. So. How's your kids? How's your wife? How's your kids? How's your wife? I don't know how this just became the hook, but all right. <laughs> how's your kids? How's your wife? How's your kids? How's your wife? Uh. That's called Flash Forward, live performance here in our studio. Marcus Gilmore, Mike Larry Draw, rapping. Marcus, uh, like a kaleidoscope of rhythms uh, from our drum kit and these sensory percussion instruments of yours. Um, so 
even when working with a rapper, you don't feel the need to do to give him a like a good boom bap. <laughs> sometimes, know? yes. Sometimes, <laughs> sometimes, sometimes. With Mike, yeah. <laughs> it doesn't really matter. Doesn't right. <laughs> throw anything at me, I will rap to it. Uh, yeah, it's true. Clearly, this is true. Anything. And, <laughs> and um, I, I did notice the uh, the the shout out to Green Eggs and Ham, which you don't often get in a show in a song. So indeed. <laughs> uh, <laughs> all right. So um, Marcus, uh, you're working on this piece for the American Composers Orchestra. You're back in town September 11th, 12th, 13th with Pat Metheny with his new trio. So yes. we'll get a chance to see and hear you at Sony Hall on those nights. But this has been eye-opening <laughs> and really a lot of fun to have the two of you guys yes. here with us today. Nice Thank to you so here. much. Thanks for having us. Thank you. Marcus Gilmore, Mike Larry Draw, this is Soundcheck. Yeah.